now crossing the finish line. Jordan Cox and Mark Crutcher in the Crutcher Developments Mustang will get the 35 lap endurance race win here this afternoon. Uh, welcome everyone to the High Tech Oil Super Series panel show as we recap from round number two at Hidden Valley Raceway and we look forward to what is coming up and preview round number three at Queensland Raceway. Joining me here on the show today of course is Stephen White from the Benella Auto Club and overseeing the High Tech Oil Super Series, Mark Crutcher, one of our competitors and Jordan Cox who joined us in Darwin for round number two in the Kings of the North TA2 Muscle Car Endurance where we had two drivers for the first time ever. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Steve, fantastic series up there, and yourself as general manager of the Benella Auto Club. What was it like taking all the competitors to Darwin, and, and what were some of the outcomes we had from that? Well, fantastic for, for a starter. You know, a huge thanks to everyone that supported us and got us there. Uh, obviously, to High Tech Oils for, for believing in us and getting us all that way up to Darwin. But, gee, what an event. Um, a milestone for, the, for our club, for this series. Uh, but certainly the people involved and, and look something significant for Darwin. So, yeah, look, uh, these guys as competitors, I'm sure, had a great time and they'll be able to talk about that. But uh, us as series promoters and, and people that can facilitate an event, uh, what a fantastic experience. And we look forward to, you know, working on that uh, some more in the future. We talk about the North Australian Motorsport Club up there. How involved were they in bringing the series? Yeah, so they supplied us with some people on the ground and obviously we're a, a part of our connection up there to Darwin. So uh, part of our overall plan is to always integrate other clubs and other tracks involving them in, in, in our event. So what we've tried to do there is make sure that we can work with them and put some, if you like, plant the seeds of the future um, and continue to work and grow on that event as we do right around the country. But yeah, a long way to go um, and certainly a lot of commitment from a lot of good people. But uh, yeah, I mean, world's first 2A2 two, two driver event, you know, some fantastic racing from our competitors and, and support classes. But most importantly, I think, uh, you know, it was just a great experience to put an event on up there. Well, let's talk to a couple of the drivers now that made the trek north and it's a lot of kilometres to carry the car up to, Mark. How did you find Darwin and what was it like trying to get the car up there in the team? Oh, it was a magnificent event. First of all, congratulations for the courage to you guys and to TA2 to um, put such an event on up there. It took a lot of courage. Uh, a lot of quality drivers made the trip. I was thankful that Ian McAllister actually drove the cars up, so Hugh and I were like superstars. We flew up, so thanks to Macca for taking the big trip. Uh, a lot of transporters made their way up there with the rest of the car, so it was actually uh, probably the most exciting thing we've done as competitors. And uh, to team up with my mate Coxie there and to do a, a, a tandem or a two-driver event was incredible and uh, it's new to all of us, but I'd say it's a massive step forward for the category and, and more of those enduro events is just uh, makes it more exciting. And even when we were there, the tension that was around trying to get driver changes correct, even getting strategies right, which a couple of people really messed up. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just the excitement of it. Uh, Saturday we had a couple of teething problems, which I understand, and Sunday was just awesome. It was absolutely brilliant. And how did the combination between yourself and Jordan come about? I mean, Jordan's here, joined us via Zoom. Uh, Jordan, what was it like to team up with Mark, and, and how did the relationship come about? I've been fortunate enough to know Mark for a few years now in the, in the Nissan Pulsar series around New South Wales and we've become good friends and uh, Mark uh, hasn't been racing for long but mate he seems like you know he has he's one of the most competitive guys around and he, he's always got a big smile when he's at the racetrack so um, and mate you know he needed a driver and uh, and, and I was very fortunate that he, that he thought of me. And, and obviously with driving, uh, uh, there was some talk in the lead up, Jordan, uh, to this event uh, around, you know, you, you, your experience around front wheel drives, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I actually did have a bit of a laugh with Mark during the end of your the, the, the heat race that you won, um, talking about the fact that, um, you know, there were some people out there talking about you had a point to prove. The reality is you can drive and drive very well, but it was certainly significant that you won that race. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, the, the whole front wheel drive, rear wheel drive thing is just rubbish, I think. If you've got a steering wheel and a couple of pedals, you're still going to go around the racetrack. It's all the same thing. So it's uh, it's all the same principles at the end of the day. But um, the the cars are quite unique in the way that they handle and drive with that crossfire who's your tyre, um, in a very good way, that is. Um, they, they, the, the, they're reasonably user-friendly for what they are too, which means most broad level of drivers can can uh can drive them and they puts on for exciting racing and that's that's what i couldn't get over from the weekend was just how close it was how um how exhilarating it was for us drivers you know you could make a mistake and you can get away with it or you could you know it really hurt you if you under drove it as well so it, the cars really enticed you to drive them hard and and put on uh put on good racing 
And Mark, for yourself, seeing Jordan drive the car, especially in that final 35 lap endurance, Jordan brings the car home. You got a dominant lead at the end, but he made a heap of positions throughout that race. Oh, it was a pretty special combination, wasn't it? I think I told you before, I started 16th and overtook the four cars that all ran off and <laughs> passed it over to, to Jordan in 12th, and I think it took him five or six laps to, to um, clean up some very good drivers. The exciting thing about the whole show was a, a guy like Jordan, who's probably, I believe, one of the best drivers and best talents in Australia, bar none, gets an opportunity to showcase how good he is. He's as good as the best in the country as far as I'm concerned and hopefully this might lead to, to better things for him. So I was really proud to, to drive him and I was a bit teary when he went over the line because I was so happy for him and it was such a, to do it with one of your mates uh, in a big event for TA2 and I love TA2, you know, I'm, I'm really part of that culture. So it was really, it was emotional for my wife and I. Uh, we loved it. So thanks to Coxie. Yeah, and, and obviously from the, the sidelines and us observing it, Mark, and you could see that you know, Jordan was pretty happy and you were pretty happy too, but the uniqueness of a two-driver event, um, that's something that, you know, I think that the future holds a bit of excitement around that. I think that's something that, would you be interested in continuing to do some other two-driver events around TA2? Oh, absolutely. I think the, the enormity of the success of this shows that it's got to be part of an annual event for us, whether it's Darwin, which was great, whether, it, whether it's Sydney, uh, it doesn't matter where it is. The whole concept of making it into a team game, which it is always anyway. Motorsport's a team game. Like You rely on your mechanics. Everyone through there, the people on the radio, it's not just a dumb fella holding the wheel up. Uh, it's a team game. And I think it was one of the most special things we could do as a team. Uh, and it's going to be a big part of TA2 in the future. Yeah. Well, we thank the team from Crusher Developments, Mark Crusher and Jordan Cox. Thanks for joining us. Mate, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was fantastic to have you up in Darwin. And we look forward to everything, Mark, that you're going to bring in round number three at Queensland Raceway. Oh, thank you, guys. And just to let you know that I'm uh, going overseas, so Jordan will be uh, steering the number four Mustang at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him go up against the boys by himself again. Our next guest is one half of the winning team from the TOT Muscle Car Kings of the North and $20,000 winner, Dylan Thomas. Also joining us is our series race director, Andrew Wilton. Now, let's start with you, Dylan. Fantastic win up there in Darwin in the Endurance Series, the Kings of the North, the first time ever. What was it like walking away with the win? Well, it's never bad walking away from a win, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it was an endurance race. It was fantastic that uh, TA2 put on the first ever uh, two-driver event. Uh, my background is endurance racing, so uh, we went up fairly confident, uh, you know, had Brooksy on board, and uh, Brooksy's a, a calibre steerer, not just in, you know, in, in Trans Am, what he had done previously, but also, um, uh, you know, going back to Toyota 86 is where he won the championship, Formula V national champion. He's, he, he's, he's a calibre driver and he's also jumped in uh, cars with me in the Evos before and done endurance racing in the Winton Wakefield 300s and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so Brooks has been around for a long time. Our team has done a lot of endurance racing. So we went up with a lot of confidence, a very clear strategy and, um, you know, uh, by the time the, the Sunday main race came along, we were in a position where we could only lose it ourselves. I think in the lead up, Dylan, you know, you yourself and Tim were pretty strong out of all the cars you picked with good combinations. I mean, and there was felt like the whole field was a good combination, particularly the, the names that were popping up. But certainly Tim, as you've said, um, I, I think is probably underrated, even though he's had those results with 86s and other things. And V's and yourself, obviously, yeah, your experience around endurance. And how did you find that yeah, the two of you drove together? Obviously, you've, you've, you've done stuff before together, but just across the weekend, obviously, Tim did really well in his heats. Uh, you obviously were striving to get points across those heats as well. And then the, the final race was uh, pretty much a, a strategy. I know we spoke in the pits during the race. It was pretty much a strategy of let's get us home, you know, and stay out of trouble. Yeah, I would say in, in, in hindsight, I'm actually very disappointed with that final race because you know, uh, Brooksy, Brooksy's very good at um, attention to detail set up on the car. And I mean, even after we won the, the endurance race on the Saturday, Saturday night, you know, we did all that prep Saturday after the event. Saturday night, we're back home having dinner, whatever. Brooksy rings, I want to change the, fr the front end. I want to change the rear end. I want to do a damper change. I'm like, whoa, just slow it up. You know, so, um, you know, so he still threw a whole bunch of extra changes to the car, even though we had a pretty good car. And, um, you know, so he's very good. I mean, and, and that the car we drove on Sunday was the best car I've ever driven. It was just like, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't take anything out of me. I, and we were going forward and we had that conservative strategy. Um, now, with that conservative strategy, we were thinking about the weekend. And my disappointment is, is maybe I should have think, thought a bit more about the series. And I think Lockie Mansell said that pretty well as well. So, um, yeah, so we probably gave away a bunch of points um, because even we're thinking about just that, that, that events win, um, and, and the 20k that obviously goes with it and you know helps pay for, for those sort of trips. Um, you know, we, we were a lap down because we didn't pit under safety car, 
but I was still moving forward without even trying. I'm like, I don't want to battle you. Oop, we're going forward. Oop, I don't want to battle, but and we kept moving forward. The car was that good. So, yeah, so it was one of those funny situations. You got out of the car, you're stoked to have won the event, but you're disappointed with the, 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 the Sunday result. We, you know, we really, we really probably should have been on the podium on that Sunday result because we, we, we basically got to about fifth on the road without trying and with a poor strategy and a lap down. You know, if we had have done the strategy, oh, we were already leading. I can't see how we wouldn't have been on the podium. Well, let's talk about the series now. You come out of this round number two with an 11-point lead. You're currently leading the championship. What does that mean for you coming into Queensland? Is it, again, a strategic point just to try and get on the podium or get some points up there in the top five? Or are we really going to start seeing you fighting it out for the wins? Oh, look, let's do the traditional line. It's too early to talk about championships. <laughs> We're only one third of the way through. <laughs> but um, and, and the reality, that is the fact. It's, it's you know, I mean, I mean, if... if Two, two, two rounds off of, of six down, if we start talking about championship and start going conservative, it's going to go away pretty quickly. 11 points isn't that big a, big a margin. Um, but the reality is, is, is our strategy, um, and we were discussing it prior to coming on air, if we sat top four of every single race, um, which I think is more than achievable for our team, uh, if we sit top four of every race, we're going to be in the championship discussion. And, um, you know, by the time Calder comes, if we're in championship discussion, then we can see how aggressive or, or how conservative we need to be at that point. So it's still event by event. I, I really need to work on my qualifying. I've never been a great qualifier. So um, if we can get a bit closer to the front um, from the start of the weekend, you, you sort of minimise what points you lose and you also get yourself a little bit more out of risk, hopefully. Well, as we move into talk about round number three in Queensland Raceway, let's head over to our series race director, Andrew Wilton. Yeah, g'day, Matty. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, look, it's been great. I think everyone's sort of been enjoying the series uh, thus far. We're two rounds in and a uh, couple of great tracks in uh, in both Winton and Darwin under our belts. So, uh, no, I think everyone's enjoying it immensely to this point and uh, looking forward to the remainder of the year. What are some of the tracks you're looking forward to getting to at the rest of the season? Look, Queensland Raceway is going to be an interesting one for me. Obviously, round three coming up next. Uh, when I'm not moonlighting as the race director for the High Tech All Super Series, I am also the competitions manager at Queensland Raceway. It's going to be a massive meeting and uh, look, I think that's going to be really exciting. And probably the other one for me, having never been there, uh, looking at exciting at the end of the year is going to be called the park. A lot of people that won't have raced there before. So to have that opportunity as part of the High Tech All Super Series, I think it's going to be fantastic for the year. Yeah, and Dylan, obviously looking forward to Queensland uh, a couple of weeks' time. You're talking about, not necessarily talking about championship, but obviously going into there with a probably a bit smarter head around the fact that you've had that great result out of Darwin. Uh, Queensland, any strengths there or anything you're going there already packaged with or, or something that you've got to work on there? Well, since things went really well at Darwin, I'm going to bring my secret weapon to Queensland Raceway. We're bringing Brooksy back to come and work on setup with us. Because his, his attention to detail is far greater than mine. Um, and some of the speed he unlocked out of the car was, was pretty special. So um, we'll bring him up to Queensland Raceway. He reckons he's got a couple of secret setups that he, uh, he, he used back in the day. So let's see if it works out. Well, thanks to our guest, Andrew Wilton, our series race director, and Dylan Thomas. Uh, good luck in Queensland. We'll be back after this short break. Next up, we do have Brett Peters, the Australian Hyundai Excel category manager, and Michael Ricketts from the Australian Super TT. Welcome back to the panel show for the High Tech Oils Super Series. Our next guest joining us is Brett Peters from the Australian Hyundai Excel Championship. And joining us for the first time in the series as well. Welcome, Brett. Welcome, Matt. Welcome, Stephen. Now, you've got some exciting news about this series. It's obviously very brand new. You're joining the High Tech Oil Super Series. Tell us about that. Yeah, Matt, look, um, one of um, our, our series here, the Track Attack Series, has been running since the inception. It's sort of the, the home of XL Racing. And for quite a few years now, EFS 4x4 Accessories have been our naming rights sponsor. And I'm very, very uh, stoked to announce that they'll be the naming rights um you know, sponsor for the Australian series. They've um, they've been long supporters of our of our team, um, and, and together with Royal Harris, several local um, races as well. And it's great to have them on board. Obviously, Brett, with you joining the the series in Queensland, that's your home, really your home track for for your series, your, your Queensland based series, Track Attack. Um, what have you seen as far as the interest from the competitors that are joining? this particular series for the national series is there been some obviously some really int interest from the southern states as well oh absolutely Stephen. the 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 interest up here has been um probably to be honest bigger than i expected um because obviously there's some travel involved but 
you know, we've got um, over 20 of the local competitors that want to do all three rounds. And um, obviously, um, they can. They had a good look at the high tech series. We're fortunate to be entering now at, at round three. They've had a, the TV sensational, the racing, all the different categories. So they're they're super stoked. How important is it to go to a national series for up and coming talent? Yeah, look, that's an interesting question, Matt. I've been a little dubious um, about you know going too big too soon. So that's why we've chosen just to do the three rounds. Uh, we're very lucky. XL Racing's gone absolutely nuts in Australia. So there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cars. There's not a lack of competitors, but um, all the states run very successful series. They've got good numbers. So we just wanted to be sure that we, um, you know, uh, crawl before you walk and walk before you run, hence the three rounds this year. And obviously leading in towards Queensland in a couple of weeks, uh, going forward from there, you're, you're running at Sydney Motorsport Park under lights. So some of your drivers are going to go south. Yes, there is some locals that are going to be competing, but some of your drivers are going to go south. And what are you looking for there? Obviously, there's a new experience as far as the, the TV, but certainly the track goes. Look, absolutely right. Um, whilst we've got a few tracks in Queensland, we're very, very fortunate. Uh, you know, a big percentage of those guys that want to travel south you know, it's the experience, it's racing at other tracks. Um, once again, racing with other competitors, just not the same group. So, um, you know, they're, they're super excited to go, particularly Sydney Motorsport Park and at night time. Um, you know, it, it ticks all the boxes. Well, Brent, we thank you for your time and joining us here on the panel show today. We um, can't wait to see the series in Queensland. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. We know you've got some strong numbers, so can't wait for the action. Thanks, guys. We, uh, we can't wait and um, look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thanks, Brad. Steve, really exciting to have the Hyundai Excels go to a national series and joining the High Tech Oil Super Series for the first time. What are we going to expect to see, do you think, from the racing itself? Because we know so many of them on track. It's going to be a, a little bit of bump and steer. Yeah, oh, look, I think it's obviously a, a little bit more like you've, you've seen with TA2, the action of TA2, but we're, we're putting it in a smaller vehicle, but no less fierce and certainly more cut and thrust. I mean, you've got uh, Brett's unique where he's running a series in Queensland and then he's joining a, and that series has grown to now be an Australian series. Uh, they've had grids of 50 cars, so <laughs> 50 excels and it'd be great if we get a grid like that at Queensland but certainly the other tracks it's going to be unbelievable action-packed and the other thing is that it makes it accessible so the platform which is what Brett spoke about these guys are people that have come through the sport yeah maybe some guys that have built a race car a bit later in life but a lot of younger guys a lot of guys that are on their way to somewhere so it's going to be really fierce and I think some of the racing in Hyundai's will be absolutely unbelievable like Brett said there's a lot of cars there's certainly no shortage of competitors but Wow, it's going to be a fantastic and exciting time for, for those guys joining a series, but for us to see all that action-packed racing, it's going to be amazing. Our next guest joining us here via Zoom is Michael Ricketts, who's been competing in the Australian Super TT Championship. Welcome, Michael. It's been a fantastic adventure. You started off in Winton, and then you made the trek all the way north to Darwin. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a trip to Darwin. It's only four hours from uh, Young down to Winton, but 40 hours up to Darwin, so... Uh, together with Ian McAllister and his wife, my wife and I, we made a bit of a holiday out of it and took five days to drive up there, but yeah, a lot quicker on the trip home. Obviously, with uh, the travel, Michael, and your little car up there, I, I, as I say, I, I watched your car in practice on the Saturday and um, there was a couple of other people around me who remarked how, how angry it sounded and how impressive it was. Obviously, we're amongst those cars from the combined sedans, the, the local NAMP school, North Australian Motorsports Club category. Um, but it was a, a bit of a giant killer up there. You know, you had some Commodores and some bigger machinery around you, but, uh, gee, you got going, uh, certainly in the handicap role, I should say, the reverse grid race on the, on the Monday. Uh, you let it there for a while, so uh, I think a little bit surprising, but certainly didn't necessarily lose that much on that big, long kilometre straight. No, that's right. They, the, the V8 rear-wheel drive cars had it all over us in the, on the start line. They'd, uh, when they dropped the clutch, boy... They left some uh, black tyre marks on the uh, on the track, and uh, the time I think by well, the time we got to the first corner, we um, in the especially in the braking zone, the little light car being only 900 kilos, we were able to you know get past a couple of them, and uh, yeah, just gradually pick them up around the track. They're a bit slower out of the corner. They've got a weight, whereas front wheel drive car, I can get onto the power sooner. So uh, yeah, it's all about that corner speed. 
And uh, yeah, funny you mentioned the car being sounding quite angry. Well, that's uh, all up to the engine builder, Jordan Cox. He certainly got it going well. We talk about the travel up there, you took your wife. What is it like to be able to go to all these different tracks and make the family part of your journey? It was great. Yeah, well, I got a surprise I didn't realise, but uh, they planned my daughter and uh, her husband and four grandkids, they come up as well. And so they uh, they went crocodile feeding and uh, down to the to the uh, down on the beach there with the where they have the wave the wave making at the and uh, yeah the grandkids they just had a great time up there thought it was absolutely fantastic so yeah really really enjoyed it. What did you um, think of the track, Michael? I mean obviously for your little car we've just spoken about some of the the different characteristics of Hidden Valley, but the track itself it was uh, obviously something that your car suited particularly around the back but just something different and another track to compete at yeah i really was surprised i had a lot of people say to me oh you know they didn't like the track but um like before i went up there but when i got there i was really surprised i really liked the track i thought it was a great layout it's interesting when you go around and you think of you know other tracks we compete at it's it seems to have a bit of everything in there it's got that lovely big straight that Double apex bottom corner, a bit like turn two at uh, Eastern Creek. Um, up around the back is a little bit there like, like you're at Winton. Yeah, so there's quite a few little mixes of a lot of other tracks. That, uh, yeah, but it definitely suited the, the small, nimble, lightweight front-wheel drive car, that's for sure. Well, Michael, we've loved having you be part of the Australian Super TT Championship. We can't wait for the next appearance you make, which I believe is Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah, looking forward to Sydney. I've... Um, obviously living here where we do at Young in central New South Wales. Uh, Sydney's one of the tracks we um, frequent quite a lot. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with Sydney. So I'm really looking forward to mixing it up down there. Um, it, it's a bit faster track, Sydney. Like there's a lot more, the corners are a little bit more open and uh, flowing than say, uh, than say the one in the Hidden Valley in Darwin. Uh, Turn one at Eastern Creek, or sorry, Sydney Motorsport Park now, it's called. Um, it's nearly one of the fastest turns in um, on the Australian circuit. We go through there at about 190, 95 in that car. So, yeah, it's pretty quick. Well, thank you for your time today, Michael. It's been great joining us here on the panel show for the High Tech Girls Super Series. We look forward, though, to round number three, Steve, coming to us from Queensland Raceway. And now that's coming up very quickly, the 2nd to the 4th of June. Yeah, absolutely. It's come across, uh, we've come across it so quickly uh, and uh, talking about uh, prepping cars and getting cars there and travelling them home and getting them back there. Uh, it's a little bit like us, you know, we're turning around and getting back to another event. So, yeah, Queensland Raceway, another track. Uh, certainly something with a with a fast flowing turn one and two section and obviously they call it the paper clip but relies on speed, relies on corner, corner speed as well as certainly a lot of good balanced handling. So it's going to be really a pretty tight tussle there for every category that's going to be joining us. And we're joining the Motorsports Festival up there which is the two days of thunder as well. Yep. So plenty more categories joining us through this round number three as well. Yeah, look, Queensland Raceway, we work closely through our AASA sanctioning body with Queensland Raceway across all their events. And this is just a natural progression of our partnership working with them. This is two days of thunder. It's actually a motorsport or a motoring week or a, a speed week up there in Ipswich. So we've been able to uh, work together with the management of um, with Josh and, and Andrew and, and, and Tony and his team up there at uh, Queensland Raceway to put together a package where we come along and we join their series or join their event and we bring the High Tech Oil Super Series along and, and we have our headline acts and they have their categories and we all basically work together. I mean, to be honest, it's a perfect, uh, a perfect scenario. You know, we've got the ability to be working closely with the event organisers and certainly the track managers, uh, but we're working together through our sanctioning body as well. So it's just, it works well for us and it's obviously going to be a, a really exciting event. I mean, we're talking uh, at this stage, talking around about 200 entries. So it's a fantastic event and it's going to be action packed. That's for sure. It's not far away now. Round number three of the High Tech Oil Super Series. For more details, go to hightechoilsuperseries.au. We can't wait to see you there June 2nd to 4th up at Queensland Raceway in Ipswich.